utilities moving towards more natural gas to start doing more fracking in southwest Virginia. That's a real concern for a lot of the local folks um, in those counties of southwest Virginia. As the mineral rights, many of the same things that you see, the companies are getting these mineral rights and are taking advantage of the land and are leaving the land very much depleted. And the local folks in that community are very concerned. This was a big issue um, that was able to get through the House of Delegates last year but then killed um, in the State Senate um, on coal issues, but those people were very much concerned about the natural gas issue as well. So we see that as an issue that will re rear its head again in this session. And then the other part is, is Governor McDonnell and his endless quest um, to try to make uh, Virginia the East Coast energy capital and to only do so through uh, fossil fuels. Um, his endless quest also includes hydrofracking, so we're very concerned that um, corporate polluter Bob McDonald may try to um, override local zoning authorities for all types of um, energy producing um, projects, um, which would exempt the, what Rockingham County has done and try to make Rockingham County's um, process not available for um, energy producing sites. So that's a concern that we have for next year. Um, this movie is a great example of sort of what the risks are that are posed from natural gas, whether it's hydro hydraulic fracking or, or other processes. Um, the fact of the matter, matter remains that they're injecting chemicals into the ground. We don't actually know what those chemicals are, and they have impacts on local communities. And this is a matter of, of do you choose corporations and corporate profits over public health and um, safe drinking water. Um, I think all of you who took the time to come out tonight would probably agree that you would choose safe drinking water over, um, over just profit at any cost. Um, the question that remains is, is does Bob McDonald um, choose safe drinking water over um, profits at any cost? And Jeff will talk about the other issue that's associated with that. So Jeff Painter from the League of Conservation Voters, yes sir. I'm just gonna say, uh, I guess if the uh Senate were to be lost uh, in this election, uh, that would probably vote pretty poorly for uh... Stakes could not be any higher. We need to protect the um, Virginia State Senate environmental firewall that we have of two votes. Um, whether the issue is fracking or uranium mining or mountaintop removal, uh, flat out denying that climate change is occurring or actually being able to make any progress on energy efficiency or renewable energy. There's only two seats that stand in the way of Bob McDonald's radical anti-environmental agenda um, being put forward to Virginia at all costs. So um, get out the vote and make sure that you vote to protect that environmental firewall. Jeff? Firewall is very important. It's more important than anything JR are going to say. I can't tell you the number of bills that unfortunately escaped from the House of Delegates last year and got to the Senate to be stopped in the Senate, thank goodness. If we would, or have, we have, a, we have a, a couple of years to go before, before we uh, make some progress, some real progress in the House as far as big numbers are concerned. In the Senate, we've got it right now. If, if we lose that firewall, um, we're in real trouble. I mean, all those things that you read about in the paper that you think sound so ridiculous but didn't get anywhere, all of a sudden are just sort of on this greased path towards somebody who's gonna sign them. So I know JR just said that, I want to repeat it, and we'll probably say it a third time because that's when you start sort of thinking about what we just said. Um, <clears throat> let me talk about uranium uh, really briefly before we get to the, to the movie. There's probably not a person in the room who hasn't heard a little bit about uranium mining or the fact that Virginia has an almost 30 year ban in place right now on mining for uranium in Virginia. There will be a bill in the uh, 2012 session to lift that ban or at a minimum at least draft regulations which would be the, the first step towards lifting that ban. The uranium industry which is uh, called Virginia Uranium but is actually a Canadian company has spent um, several hundred thousand dollars over the past several years in lobbying the General Assembly and getting key members of committees to support their position. Um, there are maybe two lobby firms in Richmond that have not received a substantial amount of money from them in a lot of cases to simply set out the fight. The environmental community had hopes of raising some money to actually engage our own lobbying firm. There were several folks just in the last couple of weeks 
who were paid $50,000 to their firm on a retainer and told, here's $50,000, we won't be asking you to do anything at all, but you are now retained, so you are not allowed to work for the environmental community. And if you're in business and somebody offers you $50,000 to not do anything, it's a pretty good deal. Um, we uh, have all been eagerly anticipating the National Academy of Sciences study that we knew was going to be released sometime in December. Uh, we now have a date, which is Monday the 12th. Um, the Uranium Subcommittee of the um, uh, Coal and Energy Commission is going to meet, and the uh, NAS will roll out the results of their study at that meeting on Monday the 12th. And so uh, a lot of folks have been saying they want to wait and see what the study is, is saying. That this sort of officially kicks off the real heart of the fight. While we've all been fighting and working really hard, now we sort of have something to scrap over. We, we need to, say, to see what is the uh, report going to say, what do we agree with, what do we not agree with. Um, between December 12th and the start of the General Assembly session, the second Wednesday in January, not a lot of time. Um, to argue over those facts with uh, some holidays in between and so forth. But that's what's going to happen. And so we will be not only communicating, but probably over communicating with all of you in the next several months about what's going on in, in every vote. And I would ask this respond and, and respond quickly. Um, both Delegate Holt and Delegate Servo can tell you that Virginia is one of the most accessible uh, bodies of, of legislators that there, there is in the world. When you walk into that building in Richmond, you can almost be assured of meeting with somebody, certainly when you meet with them here in their district. 20, 40 calls to a legislative office is a huge deal. This is not Congress where you need like hundreds of thousands. Um, 20, 40 calls and letters to a legislative office is a big deal on, on one vote. And so when, uh, when we ask you to respond and, and to, to tell a friend all those emails and to get other people to respond, it, it might sound simple. It really actually ends up having a really huge impact. And, and uranium is one of those things that's going to come down to um, somebody needing, us or them, needing eight votes on a committee. And we're probably going to come down to having six or seven apiece. And so um, if we're communicating with you and telling you this is really important, it's, it's really important. Um, and, and please uh, participate when we ask. And if you have any questions, send that email back and, and ask us. But uh, we're getting into the thick of it now, so we, we really are going to need you. I, I hate to be redundant, but I suppose that if we lose the uh, firewall, as you call it, next month, then all that will be irrelevant to anybody. I, I will say this about uranium mining. Um, it is not a partisan issue. A lot of people who um, represent Southside happen to be Republicans. They have heard so much from their constituents and so much from their voters, and they're all on the ballot uh, very soon here, and they are being very responsive, perhaps more responsive than they've ever been, to what their constituents think. And so it, it will not come down to a, a pure party line vote. You don't think so uh, if it uh, becomes a Republican Senate? I, I don't because, um, number one... I mean, they, they may be responsive right now before the election. You know, after the election. Sure. Republican well, to... once you let me in, all votes are off. I, I'm with you. Um, but uh, most people actually aren't like that. Um, we, we try to get cynical, but i got to tell you, most of the guys really actually are not like that. Um, it's going to be close. It's not going to be, if, it's, if it ends up being 22, uh, 18, or 2019 in the Senate, that will not be a purely partisan vote because there are Republicans in Southside who legitimately just don't think it's a good idea for where they live and where they work and where they want to retire. Um, there are folks who are um, so pro nuclear energy and, and so pro um, mining who happen to be uh, Democrats who aren't members of the Progressive Caucus, by the way. Um, but we hope one day maybe we'll win them over and they will be. They will be on the other side. So I, I don't think, a lot of these things are partisan issues, um, but I don't but think uranium we, mining is going to be one of them. But even Southsiders have heard about uranium. Absolutely. They've heard a lot about it, thanks to the Sierra Club and LCB and, and other folks. Mm -hmm. so. Do you, do you feel like uh, Virginia Uranium's uh, lobbying efforts, including the trips to France for legislators and to Canada, have they been effective at all, do you feel like? It's really strange. I was just saying, JR, uh, before we got here, for all the money
money that they have spent, I don't think they still have eight votes on, on one of the key committees. Um, so I think they're going to be looking at maybe doing something through the budget process um, where they would have some more votes. Um, doing something through the governor's office where he directs the uh, agency to develop regulations even though they haven't been approved by the Journal Assembly. So they're, they're looking at other alternatives. And what you have to remember about the professional lobbying community, uh, of which I was a member for a very long time, is uh, you get paid to lobby. And the longer an issue goes on, the more money you make. So there aren't a whole lot of people on the other side. Remember, I just told you a lot of people got paid $50,000 mm -hmm. for setting out. They'd be happy to get paid $50,000 to set out next year as well. Um, the, uh, it's not to say they aren't working hard and, and, and they are uh, they like to win, uh, as do we. So, so they're working hard, but um, I don't think that the amount of money that they've spent has had the impact that they think they have had. Okay. Which is good. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, when I'm going in to, to see Delegate Hope or Delegate Turnbull, and, and they're very kind gentlemen, and they let us in and they, they listen to all that we have to say, and they'll take all the papers we're always shoving at them right before they're walking onto the floor. But if there's somebody from their district that's in the waiting room there, you get one of these, which is I'll be right with you. And it doesn't mean that I'm not important or that our issue is important. It means that person who actually lives in their district, who actually can or can't vote for them, is more important. And so at the end of the day, all the VUI money or, or the Dominion money or whatever subject you're, you're talking about, um, you still actually, if you do your homework and, and you have your numbers, you can actually outweigh that. Because those other lobbyists get the same thing that I do if there's somebody there from home. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, JR. Thanks for coming. And I'm going to...